Welcome to Stop Dropping It episode 17. My name is Lisa and I am coming to you from Long Island, New York. It is such a beautiful day today. I know that I just announced that I got new lighting and everything for working in my basement last week. Now last week when I recorded it was like 30 degrees out here and so cold. There was no way I could do this outside. But today, you guys, it is like, it is 66 degrees outside right now. And honestly, like, I just needed to get out of the house. I'm just, I'm tired of being in the basement. It's, it's, it's dark down there and it's, you know, I just, I really needed some sunshine. So, so I hope you don't mind. I know that like, there's nothing growing out here yet because we're, it's not spring spring hasn't started to show itself but I just I really needed the fresh air and so I hope that you guys don't mind me just kind of bringing my stuff outside today I just couldn't pass up an opportunity to spend an hour sitting outside and podcasting during this absolutely amazingly gorgeous day to all of you who are returning viewers thank you so much for coming back and anybody who is new welcome I hope that you enjoy hanging out with me and thank you so much for for finding me you can find me also on Ravelry I am Lisa Jack 78 and on Instagram I am Lisa Westervelt flute studio if you want to catch up with me in the middle of the week in between episodes okay so what am I wearing today you guys I made a promise to you last week that I was gonna finish my worsted boxy and obviously I delivered on that I am so in love with this I wish I had finished it sooner but at the same time with the sleeves being like the length that they are on this I don't know that I would have wanted to wear it so much because it has been very very cold here but I feel like I finished this at the perfect time for this like in between winter and spring weather um, I'm gonna stand up so that you guys can see the full effect. This fits so perfectly and comfortably. I am absolutely in love with this sweater. So it's actually really hard for me to tell now how the lighting is. It's very sunny out here right now. So hopefully it is okay. Um, yeah, I, I got this off the blocking mats yesterday and after I finished up teaching, I spent 30 minutes just weaving in the ends and then I threw it on and I already wore this yesterday. <laughs> I wore this out to um, Owen's theater rehearsal. I was just so excited. I was, I was thrilled. I was able to get some pictures of it. My husband is my photographer and so I snatched him outside before before we went to take Owen to theater and we took a whole bunch of photos that I've not looked at yet. But I am sure that I will insert some of them here so that you guys can see. Um, yeah, it's so fun though. Um, just, I'm really just, I'm loving everything about this sweater, the colors, this yarn. Um, so I used Malabrigo Rios, which is the yarn that Hohi recommended in her pattern. So um, I probably should have said that it's the Worsted Boxy and it is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. In case any of you didn't already know that, I feel like, I feel like just about everybody has knit this sweater. And if not the worsted weight version, there's also a fingering weight version. I am definitely casting that one on very soon because I was already in love with knitting this sweater there was it was just it was that perfect mindless project that I needed to have going on alongside some of the complicated test knits that I have been doing lately um, and it was it was just like the most enjoyable knit and then because like you cast on at the bottom you do a couple rounds of ribbing and then you're doing stockinette for ever it seems like forever um, and then all of a sudden like you get to do some fun shaping at the top and you get to do some garter stitch and I'll turn around too um, so that you guys can see there's a 
short row shaping and some garter stitch detail on the back there and and then it's like it's basically done like you do that and then so I, I did that much and then a couple weeks went by and I was like I really need to this is what I was saying to you guys last week I really need to just pick up the stitches and do the sleeves and do the neckbands because I knew it was gonna be so quick I don't know why I mean I know why I didn't just do it it's because I had other projects that needed priority but I'm so glad that I finally decided I was gonna make this deadline of st. Patrick's Day so that I had a green sweater this month um, and that I was gonna make the deadline of having this finished to wear for you guys on the podcast today because it went so fast it went so fast um, so the sleeves I mean if you can see the body so I knit size medium, but for the first three sizes, the body is the same. So this is like what it's gonna be for extra small, small, and medium. So the sizing, the way that the sizing works for this sweater is it's really the sleeve circumference, like how much stitches you're gonna pick up. And so I didn't even have to like decide until the very end of knitting the sweater what size I was going to make. Um, but I did decide to do size medium because after, um, after having that sleeve debacle last week with one of my test knits, I decided just to be safe. I'd rather have a little bit more room in my sleeve than a little bit less room. And of course this fiber is a super wash wool, which is going to stretch in comparison to the other sweater that I was talking about. So, I mean, it didn't really make that big a difference but yeah so it's funny I had this um I had this out on my blocking mats and Bryce was looking at it and he's like that's a really really wide sweater like he wasn't able to wrap his head around what it was gonna look like on and so I showed him a picture of of Hohe wearing hers in the in the pattern I was like see but this is like it, it falls like this it's like you have extra room so it goes like it's really wide but then like the drape and just the way that it hangs is just so comfortable this is the sweater that i really needed in my wardrobe that i never knew i needed and now i want to make a million more i could basically wear this sweater every single day just have it in a different color and I would be so happy. So, um, yeah, so this is my worsted boxy and I'm just so excited about it. I'm so, I'm so comfortable right now. Um, let's see, I mentioned it was Malabrigo Rios. The color, this color is Va, V-A-A. -A. So if any of you guys were wondering about, about that. And I love it. I mean, you guys know me, I talk about this all the time, that this is not a color that I tend to buy. So when I purchased this color, by the way, stash knit, because I bought the yarn for this back in 2019, and I only just finally knit it up at the end of 2020. So this totally counts as a stash knit because it sat. Like I bought, yes, I bought it for this sweater, but it sat for like a good year before I actually knit it up. Totally counts as a stash knit. So yeah, um, I love these colors. These colors look great on me. I mean, I think they do. I really like them. So if you guys are new here, my color is purple. I buy everything purple. There's no purple in this. No purple. I do think though that, um, like I kind of already have in my head from my stash, yarn picked out for my fingering weight version. And I'm kind of torn between two. There's one that's more purpley and there, there's one that is more um, neon, rainbow neon like speckles all over. It's uh, La Jolla by Ba Yarns. I think that that's what I'm gonna use for this. I just have to double check that I have enough yardage, which I think that I do. Um, but yeah, it's like in my head, I've already cast on my fingering weight version of this and it's it's gonna be like these bright neon spring colors and it's gonna be amazing so yeah all right so that is what I am wearing today so let's move on to some finished objects okay 
obviously this one is my biggest finished object. Um, I don't have any others, but I can show you the one that, um, I, I should save this for acquisitions, but I picked up this bag um, from Fiberspace and this is a Franklin Habit design and it says prepared and it has a sheet and toilet paper and yarn and wine and they re-released this after um, Kamala Harris visited Fiberspace. I don't know if you guys, you guys must have seen that. I mean, it was all over Instagram. But if you guys are not on Instagram, then maybe you didn't notice that uh, last week, Kamala Harris visited Fiberspace in Alexandria, Virginia, and she was there to speak about um, how the pandemic has affected women-owned businesses in particular during this time. So it was really cool, and um, the owner, I think her name is Danielle, the owner of, of Fiberspace was wearing this t-shirt, and so they, um, they had some of the bags in stock, and I meant to pick one up like a year ago, and I didn't, and I snatched it up because I was like, hello, I need project bags. And I'll show it to you guys in more detail. I've got, um, I've got to empty it. Let me empty it. I'll just do that now. So I have other acquisitions for an acquisition section, but I just used this to like transport my things out the doors. So this thing is really big. It's a really nice canvas. I love the color. It really goes well with my worsted boxy. And so let me show you, there's like, there is an adjustable handle that you can wear like strapped over your shoulder. There is like a little smaller handle and there is a snap closure right here. There is a pocket. See, I haven't even taken the tag off of it yet, but so there's all, there's a lot of room in here, right? There's all that room. And then there's this pocket flap here that has a zipper. And so it's really, really fun. So this is a, um, a bagu, I guess is the, so it's a bagu, but it's Franklin Habits design. Yeah, so you guys should go check out Fiberspace. They have this in a t-shirt design and the bag. So the bag, honestly, like I thought it was gonna be a lot smaller. So I was really pleasantly surprised when it came and it was as big as it was. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm gonna show you guys my finished object. So last week I showed this to you inside out because this was my test knit that I did for Annie Lupton of Boho Chic Fiber Co. This is her journey tee. And last week it wasn't quite out yet. It was, I filmed a couple days before it came out, but now I can show you in its finished glory, um, her little design. And so it's a little sleeveless t-shirt. Um, and it's really, really cute. Um, I photographed this without anything underneath, like without any shirt underneath or anything, but I think that this would work really well layered on top of like a long sleeve shirt. And, but it also, the yarn that I used works really, really well next to skin. This um, is Yorkshire Spinners, West Yorkshire Spinners. Um, the Croft, which is 100% Shetland wool. And it is so soft. And as you guys can see, it is really, really great for color work. And you guys can see all of the, um, the specks in the lighter color. So the lighter purple shade is Klausta and the dark purple is Quendale. And so, yeah, so this is my other finished object. And it's got, let's see, so it has like, undone edging on the sleeves so you just like she had like slipped stitches around to leave like an unfinished look you could pick up stitches and put sleeves on it i guess if you wanted to but um and then it's like a i cord bind off which was the first i had ever done so that was cool and then because of the way that the design is exactly identical front and back 
there was no way that I could tell which was the front and which was the back. So I stuck one of these tags in and it says this is the back and this is a Kylie and Machine, Kylie and the Machine tag. And she is an Australian based business. And yeah, I ordered the tags online. Don't remember where from, but there's like, I just checked her website and there's a, like a whole bunch of fabric. It was a fabric store actually that I ordered it from, not a yarn shop. Um, yeah, so that is my journey tea. And I really like it. And I might actually get to wear it soon if the weather actually hangs in there like this. This would actually be a good day for this t-shirt too. Maybe want to wait till it's like closer to 70. It's like 66 right now. It is it's glorious out here. I really needed a day like this. I really just needed to get out of the house for a bit. Yeah. So, all right. So that is my finished object. And this is my finished object. And that completes my finished objects for the week because how many finished objects do you guys expect me to have? I mean, I need a lot, but yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like when you, when you start a whole bunch of projects, there's like a period of time where it seems like forever and you, you don't have finished objects for like the longest time. But then like all of a sudden, <laughs> all of those projects start to get to the same like point in the process. And then it's like, boom, boom, boom. You've got like finished object after finished object. And it's like, it just seems like you just did so much knitting. Whereas like in reality, it's just like, you've been working on all of these things for like such a long time and they've just been whips and they've been whips and whips and whips. And then like, just finally, like all together, like everything just kind of finishes all at the same time. And it just, you just, you just feel like you're like the most accomplished knit knitter ever, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Um, I do have another finished object actually, but it's in my spinning section. So I'm going to save that for my spinning section because I don't often have a spinning section. So I'm kind of excited to have one today. Um, but, all right, so let's move on to whips. Okay, so here's another like acquisition that is not gonna be in my acquisition section. Um, along with the Franklin Habit bag, I also snatched this little project bag because I figured I was already paying for shipping and this one wasn't that expensive. So I just kind of added it in. I need project bags. So this is, um, oh my goodness. I don't know if I remember what this is called. Here we go. Danica Studio is what it says. So here's the, the label inside. And this is like a drawstring bag. It's got, um, there were like three different patterns that you could choose from. So I got the meow pattern because I'm a cat person. Um, but it's got like these double, uh, these double, somebody will tell me the word I'm looking for. I'm not going to bother to search for it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Straps. It's like a cord. I don't know. It's like a drawstring. Drawstring. That is the word I was looking for. You guys, it's got like a double drawstring <laughs> that you can, and you can wear it like as a backpack. So I haven't done this yet, but I will show you guys what that looks like. Probably pretty cute. Um, I'm showing this to you because my whip is in here. So I stuck my whip in here. Look how cute that is. So it's just like a little really lightweight drawstring <laughs> project bag. So yeah, so it's it's like it's canvas and let's see. It has this little pocket inside. So there's no zipper or closure on the pocket, but this would be like really easy to put like a tape measure something like that, stitch markers and a tape measure or something in. And then other than that, it's just holding your project. And I'm gonna take out my project. All right, you guys, I'm pretty sure can guess what this is too. Um, this is my Garland pullover. And I am, I'm calling this a finished whip for today because it is finished in the sense that I have completed my 
requirement, my minimum requirement for the test knit. So this is a test knit that I'm doing for Stephanie Lotvin. She is um, Telly Bean Knits on Instagram and on Ravelry. And she is the author of that Knit Happy with Self-Striping Yarn book that I showed off um, a few episodes ago. And so we have, we have a yoke that is finished and I have a sleeve that is finished. And so, and I also have a really big strand of my hair that happens all the time. So yeah, so I have officially completed my test knit requirement. And so, and I even, I told Stephanie too, I said at the moment that I decided to knit the, the Holly version, the Christmas version, I kind of decided I was probably only going to make the minimum requirement because I have so many other test knits that I'm working on at the same time that because I made this into a Christmas version, like the immediacy of having this completed didn't really feel very immediate because it's March. So I've got nine months still until, until Christmas, until December. Um, but I'm so excited. I am going to be actively working on this still. Um, yeah, definitely going to still be working on this because I don't want it to just sit until December. But it's not going to be like high priority. Now that I've met her deadline and she's, she's going to release her pattern and plenty other test knitters have completed the garment. Um, and then others like me have met this like minimum requirement state. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to work on it like a little bit here, a little bit there. I feel like the sun just moved. So I might have to, I might have to adjust the camera just a little bit. Um, it's like the one thing with sitting outside is you're kind of like <laughs> the light when, where the sun is and there's no, um, like when I was recording outside earlier at, at the beginning of my podcast journey, there were like leaves on the trees and, and things that helped kind of block the sun. And so there's, there's nothing right now. So I'm just kind of working around that, but I just, I had to be outside today. So I hope that, I hope that it does not, I hope that it's not bothering you guys too much that the light is changing a bit. Um, there we go. See, now a cloud has, now there's a cloud and we've got some great light. So let me hold this up again. Um, yeah, so look at this yoke. Like, I love it so much. It's puckering a little bit. I did not block this yet. Um, I did try it on and it fits really nicely. Um, but I almost lost my stitches on the needles because I didn't switch it to like a longer cord before I tried it on. So I was like, I'm not going to do that again. But um, I love it. I really love this so much. I did not um, haul the yarn out here, but I've got this much still that is attached to the body. So this is my um, Barrett, Barrett Wilco Wisconsin, Wisconsin fingering yarn that I'm using for the body. And the minis in here all came from Knitterly Things that's a little bit better light right there the the colors all came from knitterly things just um i don't know like what names of the colors they are i am in julia's a member of julia's sock yarn of the month club and i elect to have minis included so that i can do like contrasting um heels and toes and all of that so i had just dug through my stash so this is another stash project i am on a roll today with stash projects um real actually not annie's the journey tea that i just showed you that was I, I purchased yarn for that but this was a stash project this one was a stash project and now the light is i'm gonna have to adjust yeah so i just i dug through all of my sock yarn from julia and i found 
minis that I thought worked well together to do this Christmas version. So I know that the red one actually came from a Valentine yarn. Um, I think this green one was was more of like a gemstone because it's not really a it's like a teal it's like a deep bluish greenish teal I don't know how well you guys can see that at all um and then this light green one might have been from like a St. Patty's Day yarn like I, I don't even know so I have no idea what the colors are for those it's just whatever I grabbed and they all sparkled so that was another um another factor in my decision for which minis to use as I was putting them together because they don't all have the Stellina in them. So I definitely, I made sure to, to choose three that had the sparkle in them because I thought that that was a nice uh, festive touch to do on a holiday sweater, but also an interesting thing to mix with like a really rustic yarn. So I thought like the juxtaposition of that was, was really cool. And I mean, it's a really, really subtle sparkle, but I know that it's there, even if like you can't exactly tell just by looking at it. it just, it's really fun. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay on Sleeve Island a little bit longer. I spent, I spent this whole past week on Sleeve Island. I, I had the sleeves that I did for my worsted moxie. And then I was I was on Sleeve Island with this sweater just all week. And so I decided for this sleeve to use the lighter green and the red. And I'm kind of thinking for the other sleeve, I might go with a darker green just to like be a little bit cute with that. So I know, um, I know a lot of people might prefer to have their sleeves matching like that but I don't know it's such it's such a small bit of color work in that area that I I think it might look really cute to have them different so I do think for the other sleeve I'm gonna try the darker one and see how that turns out so that is my garland pullover I love this you guys when this pattern comes out you guys need to buy it it is such a well-written pattern this knit completely enjoyable all the way through, like a thousand percent enjoyable. Um, and you don't have to do the Holly version. Like basically, I, I can insert a picture for you guys um, because this is not a secret test knit at all. But basically, if you don't want to do the Holly Berries, it's just a two color stranded knitting project and you just stay with that contrasting color at, at a at any point where you see those red dots. Um, I also wanna say like, if you want to make the Holly version, and if you are intimidated by the thought of three color stranded knitting, um, which I mean, there's not a lot of it. There's two, four, six, eight, ten. There's only 12 rounds in the whole sweater, plus one on each cuff. And actually the cuffs were not even, because it, the motive is a little bit different on the cuffs, the cuffs, even with the red, was entirely just a double-stranded knitting, two-stranded. So there's only 12 rounds of this whole sweater that use three colors. So it could be a good opportunity to try it out for the first time because it's not very much. It's not gonna make you wanna like, beat your head against the wall if it's not the kind of thing because I know like I can go a little bit crazy with the three color knitting and I'm about to have another project where it's like mostly three colors and I'm kind of procrastinating starting that one um but so you could you could either like brave it for 12 rounds or you guys could totally just go back and duplicate stitch in the berries after after the fact if you think that that might work better for you. So anyway, um, let's see, she, this is due on Saturday. That was our deadline, which is the 13th of March. So I'm not sure when exactly she is planning to release the pattern. I can't imagine it's gonna be like too much beyond this weekend. So 
be on the lookout for it. I will let you guys know when she does release it, I will be posting my whip photos and I will be letting you guys know when it is actually available because I know a lot of you guys have really been loving this sweater in particular. I've been getting a lot of comments from you guys on, on it and how much you guys are enjoying seeing this one. So yeah, that is my only whip. Actually, no, it's not my only whip. All right, next whip. I have one more. Okay, so I know that the light is not perfect right now. I'm like, I'm trying to adjust myself and I still like, I can see right here. <laughs> I've got like, the sun is just kind of choosing the side of my face, but I've, I've tried to move around a little bit and it's not really working. So I, I hope you guys are not too upset that I'm sitting outside today. I just, I had to get out. But the other day, I don't know if you guys saw on my Instagram stories, but I made another trip to see Miss Tabitha over at Long Island Yarn and Farm. And it was actually a really nice day. I took Owen after school and we went and said hi to all the animals. We got there, it was like feeding time. So they were all like eating and they're messy eaters llamas and sheep and goats they, they just like I mean of course like I don't know why I would even say that like they're not going to be like sitting there with like a fork or anything like they shove their face in the hay and but it's so cute it's it's adorable anyway so she was feeding her animals but we went over there because um I had told Tabitha that I would be happy to do some sample knitting for her and she had a project that she was wanting to see if I could maybe get knit up in time for Vogue Knitting Live, which is next week. It is March 18th through the 21st. So that's a Thursday through a Saturday. No, through a Sunday. It's four days. So she kind of, she kind of asked me last minute. We had been like, I had been talking to her for a little while, for like a few weeks at least, about doing some sample knitting. And she just, you know, she's, she's a busy lady, so she just kind of forgot. And then she was like, oh my gosh, um, I totally understand if you don't have time to do it. And don't worry if you can meet the deadline or not. If you can have this done anytime during Vogue Knitting Live, I will be grateful. She's like, but, I need the samples anyway, so if you can't get it done, don't worry about it, um, you know, like by that deadline. So I picked up some yarn from her, and this was not a purchase, so don't worry. Um, she gave me these two options. So I'm actually gonna be knitting two of the same thing for her, one in this beautiful pink clove color. And she asked me to start on this one first because she thought with spring coming, everybody might want to see like a pink. So this is, it's so beautiful. Um, I don't have like the labels, but this one is in a blend of alpaca, merino wool, and silk. I don't have the label to like get the percentages of that for you guys. This is so, so soft. So it is basically, it's like a a bare yarn with blended into it um, just like the lightest shade of like a blush pink and it's it might be hard to see um, how pink this is it's not an in-your-face pink but it is like it's like a really beautiful like baby pink but you almost can't tell that it's pink unless you're holding it up next to something like that is white. And so I'm gonna show you, um, I'll show you the other one in a second. So I'm gonna show you the project that I'm working on. So the way that um, that Tabitha's patterns, like she, she sells patterns, but actually she doesn't sell them. The patterns that she has that um, are available with the purchase of her yarns. So, like you can choose when you're buying yarn from her, you can choose a pattern from her if you want and she will include that as like a thank you with your yarn purchase. Like you do not have to purchase the pattern separately. 
However, you are not able to just purchase these patterns. These patterns are only available if you purchase yarn from her. So part of my gift is, I, I think I, I, I am going to be paid for doing this. Um, I, you know, we haven't worked out the details yet. Um, but I, you know, I'm just happy to do this for her. She's really special person to me and we have a great relationship. So this pattern is called the classic Hampton shawl. And actually I have it here. I'll pull out some pictures, but, um, I don't know how well with the plastic you guys can see, but those are a couple of pictures of the design. I can, I mean, I can pull pictures for you guys and, and put them here of what the finished garment looks like. It's just, um, you won't actually be able to get this pattern unless you go purchase yarn from her to make it. So anyway, this is what it is knitting up so far. It's like, it's like a basket weave pattern. You can kind of see right through this outside in the light. It's so pretty. There's like a little tiny bit of Stellina in this yarn too. Um, or maybe it's just the shine from the little bit of silk that's in it, but the drape, can you guys see the drape on this yarn? This is so, so soft. This, it's, it's amazing how soft this is. I am just like, I'm like, I'm just loving that I get to work with her yarn. Um, you know, so this is not something I'm gonna be able to keep for myself when it's all said and done. This is going to be returned to Tabitha and she's gonna have it as a sample. So I'm trying to get this one done for her by next week. So you can see that is what it is looking like so far. I'm about 25% of the way through right now. So, and I've only spent two nights working on it so far. Um, so, so, so I'm making this in the pink clove so that she can have this as like a spring sample. And, this back in here for a oh wait I actually wanted to show you so you guys might be able to see I did the provisional cast on that I did was using a white yarn so maybe you guys can actually see like the difference between like the white and the actual like pink color of the yarn there that's so pretty but it's so soft it's just this feels so luxurious to be knitting on right now. So that is my whip for this week. So I'm working on it in the pink clove. And then the other yarn that she gave me, um, I don't know the name of this one. She didn't give me a label or anything, but she loves brown yarn. I love brown yarn too. I think that I would actually prefer to knit this in a brown yarn, but her brown yarns, like she has trouble selling them. And I think it's because she does all of these blends with like, more colorful things I mean like look at like the Valentine yarns that I picked out from her were like purples like they had fuchsias and deep like deep purples in them and those I gravitate toward purple and you know everybody else does too like she she comes out with these limited edition yarns and she has she has the blends like in such fun colors like for the season and it's really fun um, but I know that like she's like I need to get you guys to love brown yarn <laughs> and I love it too it's just really hard in that moment like when you see like your favorite color purple and it's just as luxurious and then you see like the same yarn in like a equally beautiful brown it's like it's always it's really hard to choose the brown but her brown yarns are lovely and actually that that shawl that I wear that I showed you guys last time I put a picture of it. That's a brown yarn, but it's got like specks of colors all over throughout it and like all the specks of the rainbow. Um, so I'm also gonna make the same exact wrap for her, for a sample for her. And she also gave me this, this color. So this does not have any wool in it. This is just alpaca and silk. And so this one, um, the gauge is gonna be different. So like the pattern is slightly different in order to achieve the same dimensions, which is important. 
so like she's she's very particular like I did a gauge swatch <laughs> she's like I need to make you know I need you to make sure that you're on gauge for these because I've been disappointed with some sample knitters in the past and she's like you never quite know what you're gonna get it's not everybody meets gauge and then it's great but like it doesn't it's not what it's supposed to be so I made sure that I am meeting gauge because I do not want to disappoint Miss Tabitha in any way um, but yeah so this one is a slightly thinner um, it's still a sport weight I think but it's like it's definitely thinner this one is more like a heavy fingering I would say so but it's so soft and it's so beautiful and I love this shade of brown so I don't know if this is like one of her new yarns that is going to be coming out in like next week or not because I don't know what it is all I know is that it is soft and that it is alpaca and silk and that I get to work with it so um, this one I probably won't be able to get done in time for her to have for Vogue I'm gonna really try to get that first one done for her by next week and I want it done like blocked and ready to hand to her done so I think that that's gonna be like the main focus of my knitting for this week even before I, I get started on a whole bunch of other test knits that I have going on or coming up that I need to start getting working on very soon so all right let's move on so that's that's all my whips so I have some spinning to share with you guys and I have a little bit of acquisitions not too much for a test knit and my fiber of the month club so I think I'm gonna go and share my spinning with you guys as well as um, what I got for the fiber of the month even though I do a separate video for that um, I thought since I'm actually having a spinning section in this week's video that I would show them because they are it's so fun and it is very um, appropriate for the month of March and I think I'm gonna start getting spinning on that like today a little bit um yeah and then I will show you the yarn that I got um in the mail for my test knit and then that'll be the episode so let's move on to spinning so some of you if you follow me on Instagram might have already seen because I have been having fun actually posting to stories I've been trying to be really good about that um, yeah I, I can see now why people post to stories all the time because you don't have to worry about hashtags and writing long captions you just you can post a quick picture and it is so much more efficient um, so I haven't really done stories until like this past week and I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. So um, if you guys want to see like what's going on in between episodes, come follow me on Instagram because I will keep on popping pics and stories and just sharing little things here and there in between episodes. But one thing that I shared in stories was I finished my yarn so this has been like a year long project now there's all these white bits in it because this is actually <laughs> it is in so many little it's in so many little skeins because I don't know I'm not yet I'm, I'm a beginning spinner this is my second yarn ever. I have been spinning for like, I think about two years now, but this is only my second actual yarn that, that I have made because I just, I don't do it consistently. I'm not, it's not like my knitting where I am constantly knitting. Um, but whoops, I just dropped some, but even see like, I have like, I have some that are like extremely little bits that I don't know. I don't know why I'm gonna get better at it I want to get better at spinning like larger <laughs> larger quantities um, and I mean this is four ounces so I don't mean like I don't mean like more than four ounces but I mean like less small bits like longer 
word I'm looking for. I don't want my yarn to be interrupted with breaks. And I know that this is something that, um, I mean, maybe I could fin fill up my spindle a little bit more before I start. But I, part of it with this is that when I, because I did this so on and off, I had parts where I accidentally was inconsistent in the direction that I was spinning my singles. I know that you are only supposed to choose your direction and stick with it for the entire <laughs> spinning portion. So like I think clockwise is the way that you're like supposed to go for spinning your singles and then you ply counterclockwise. You can do it the other way, but you just have to make sure that like throughout the entire spinning, you are the same direction and that you do the opposite when you ply. So I didn't realize until I was plying that I must have picked up my spinning and spun the opposite direction for certain parts of my singles. So that kind of resulted in me having lots of smaller bits because I had to kind of it, it, it either broke apart when I was plying because all of a sudden I got to a spot where I must have spun in the opposite direction by mistake. You guys don't need to yell at me about it. I know that you're not supposed to do that. It's just because I put it down for such long periods in between working on it. And I, I don't know if I just wasn't paying attention when I was actually spinning or if I just forgot what direction I was going. I'm going to be more mindful of that in the future because I would like to not have it be an absolute mess. But so I finally got it all plied together and I have no idea yet how many yards I have because I have not counted. Like I put it on my nitty naughty to just skein it up and do the washing. Um, you guys. I was so happy to see what a difference washing and finishing your yarn makes. It's kind of like blocking your finished garment. When, before I washed this, these, like it, it wouldn't even hang straight. And I did not, I did not put any weights on it. Like I know sometimes people are like, oh, you can like put a weight on it to stretch it out while it's drying. I didn't do that. I just, I just let it hang on a hanger. Like I just draped it over the top of a hanger and I just let it dry and it all worked itself out. I did like a little bit of thwacking and I did a little bit of um, whatever, whatever this is called to like get the water out after washing before I hung it up. But basically before I washed it, it, it was like curling on itself and it was like, it just, it wasn't like, I don't know. I don't know the word, I, I'm not finding my words today. I am so sorry that I cannot seem to, to come up with English words. I have no idea why. But, um, but yeah, like it, it didn't look like a really nice yarn to me even after I had plied it until after I washed it. And now I'm really excited about it. So just ignore all of the white bits. I know that there's a lot of places. So that was me tying it to prevent it from getting tangled when I washed it. Um, but I am really, really liking how this turned out. And I am so happy that it is done. Um, so these colors are so pretty. Now it finally feels like soft and squishy. It finally feels like yarn. So I am so excited about that. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, at some point, at some point I'm gonna have to go through and figure out what my yardage is so that I can figure out what I wanna do with this. Cause right now I have no idea. All I know is that I have finally completed yarn number two and I love it and that took me a long time to do and from here on I would like for my yarns not to take me a whole year to make. <laughs> so I've got like this one but I don't know probably gonna get tangled up. Yeah so it's just it's it's really nice 
I really like it. And I'm just, I'm glad that I actually followed through on it all the way. So there's like some magenta in here and some blue, some like lighter turquoise blue and some purple. And I just really, really like it. These are my colors, you guys. These are my colors. So um, yeah, what do you guys think this should be? Um, I don't think I mentioned, this is a BFL. It's a blue fa faced Lester yarn. So 100%. I don't know what to do with it. Right now I'm just gonna enjoy it and I'm gonna just put it aside and wait until it tells me what it wants to be. But feel free to throw out some ideas to me in the comments. I would love to hear them. So, all right, I'm gonna put this down and I would like to show you guys um, the fiber that I got from Paradise Fibers. So um, I do a separate video, an unboxing, unbagging video every month. Um, my, my Christmas present from my husband was a subscription to the Paradise Fibers Fiber of the Month Club. I am not affiliated with them. I would love to be. <laughs> so I, I sent them an email like two months ago and they just never responded. So I might have to follow up with them again. Um, because now I've done like four unboxing videos. So it would be really cool to have an affiliate link for those, but I don't. So at the moment I am not affiliated. I am just enjoying my Christmas present, at least unboxing it because I haven't done anything more <laughs> with my Christmas present than that. But I'm going to start with this one. Um, so I'm not, you know, you guys can watch my unboxing, but I'm just going to show you guys the fiber. So the, they do a theme every month. And so I got this like amazing iridescent bag in the mail. And so, um, the, the theme for this month was fairy tale. And basically they came up with like blends of, um, a merino. So this is completely merino yarn and they, you got one of eight different colorways. So the one that I got is called over the rainbow and it's so perfect for, for this month, like with St. Patrick's day and everything. I haven't even taken it all out of here yet, but look at this. How perfect is this for St. Patrick's Day? And so it's like, I guess it's combed top and it's got some blue Stellina in here that I don't think the camera is gonna pick up at all, but it is really, really sparkly. Um, a subtle sparkle, but it's definitely there. And the Stellina that you're, that you're seeing in there is like a bright blue Stellina. And so, um, I've been trying to like finish up like before just jumping in and starting with my new fiber I really wanted to finish up my previous spinning projects and so that's what I've been focusing on so everything now is off of my drop spindles I've got a few a few drop spindles and I'm going to probably do this on a drop spindle but I need to show you guys um where did my bag go uh-oh 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 hang on it blew away where did it go hold on guys I'm gonna edit this out and be back okay I'm back it blew all the way off the deck I didn't even usually I like usually I notice as it's as it's like in the air going away from me it's like the one thing with doing these outside is if it's a little bit breezy and it's going to be getting a little bit breezier this afternoon it just blows <laughs> so yeah so i'm actually really excited to dive into this one i think that this is my next spinning project but the other thing that they sent is really interesting and i have to do some research on how to use it, how I want to use it, because there's different options. So the other thing that they sent, and there's also different colors, um, is they sent some locks, some dyed wool locks. So I'll just take like a little handful out. 
And so I got this chartreuse color, which not my normal color, right? They also have a fuchsia, so <laughs> I would have loved to get the fuchsia. I, I might actually have to go back and pick up some of the fuchsia and maybe one other colorway of the fiber. Cause that's the thing with the, um, with the fiber of the month is you, you have like early access before they put it in their shop. Club members can say, oh, I wanna try, um, I want either more of what you sent me or I wanna try this other colorway that I didn't get in my bag. And that way you can, you have access to it before it hits like where, where anybody can purchase it. So, and you get a little bit of a discount. So, um, but yeah, so, so they sent these. So I have to decide like what I wanna do. Like, do I want to make like an art yarn and just kind of randomly spin these into my yarn, which could be kind of fun. I mean, I, I've never made an art yarn, right? So that could be fun. It could be especially fun to try to make an art yarn right now because I'm not yet a very consistent spinner because I'm so new. So an art yarn might actually turn out really nicely right now because I'm not very perfect yet. Um, or like I was watching a little bit, like they have a bunch of really fun to watch videos on their YouTube channel, the Paradise Fibers channel. And the other thing that you can do with these is you can actually, you can comb them out. So like you don't have to use them in these little locks. It seems like you can, you can comb them out and either spin them after they've been combed or you can then like blend them if you have a blending board. I don't have one of those either. So I don't have any of the tools to do that yet, but they look really, really fun. They look super fun and yeah. You guys can see like where my brain is going. Um, I don't wanna invest in too many materials though until I am a little bit more consistently spinning my fibers so but like the possibilities of creating your own fiber blends and end of just like how you can manipulate the things that they send you in your bag is really cool so I what do you guys think should I just should I just try to like spin an art yarn with this because I might play around with this like after I make this video and I might just like enjoy sitting out here a little bit this afternoon and take advantage of this weather and just just kind of sit out here and spin for a little bit because I'm kind of, I'm feeling, I'm, I'm just feeling that calling to me today. But um, let me show you these two together. So if you guys wanna get like the whole full on experience of my unbagging and seeing this for the first time, you can go to, to my video. It's just the previous one on this channel, but I'll link it, I'll link it below for you guys too. So this is um, together what these look like. And I mean like, yeah, green is not exactly my thing. Rainbow is most definitely my thing, but I'm really enjoying the green because of St. Patty's Day being next week. So, so I think I'm just, I'm feeling a little bit like festive right now. And I still haven't cast on those St. Patty's Day socks that I was talking about wanting to do last in the last episode. So, so I kind of want to cast on the, some St. Patty's Day socks and I think I might just want to start spinning this up. So, so I wanted to show you guys that because that came. So, and I never include the Paradise Fibers in my like acquisition sections because I do a separate video. Um, but because I had spinning to share today, I just, I thought it would be a fun thing to, to show you guys. All right. So with that being said, I am going to move on to the official acquisition section of my video. So if you guys have had it with seeing the things that I've picked up that I have sprinkled in throughout the video and can't handle any more of it <laughs> or you just are like girl you've been talking for an hour I'm out <laughs> like that is cool um, as always thank you guys so much for watching um, if you liked my video please subscribe I don't know you know how often I will be getting outside 
just kind of as the weather allows. I'm sure next week I'll probably be back in my basement with my lighting and all of that stuff. Um, but I just, I really felt the need to get outside today. So thank you for hanging out with me in this beautiful weather. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and all of that. And if you are sticking around, let's move on to acquisitions. So I got a few things in the mail this week. Um, I didn't actually bring all of them out here to show you. I just didn't want to trudge it all upstairs. So I will save some of it to show you guys next time. But what I did bring was, I remember at the end of my last video, I had gotten all of this yarn to make underwear for my husband. I'm gonna be knitting him some boxer shorts. And I hadn't actually, um, looked at it until I was on camera showing you guys like it had come in the mail and I had opened it but I didn't like I didn't like check my order and so as I was showing it to you guys oh my goodness there is this bug I'm gonna show you guys hold on check this out my phone case was sitting there and there's this really cool I think that this might be like a stink bug actually I'm not really sure and I have um I'll have Bryce identify it, but I wish Owen were home right now. He would be all excited about this guy. So yeah, Bryce, who is this guy? So yeah, so sorry that distracted me. I was just, uh, I was just <laughs> my eyes were over there. I was like, there's this really interesting green bug crawling on my phone case. So I like leave him there. Hi. Hi. I don't know if you guys can see him. Let's see if I can get the uh, camera to focus on him at all. I don't think it will. I might have to edit this out. Um, yeah, it's not really focusing. Not really focusing that great, but he's pretty cool. Hi. You're on the move. Anyway, this is this is my phone case. I've got my phone and my camera there. <laughs> so, this is what it's like to podcast outdoors, you guys. Um, all right, so I'm gonna set him down now. Sorry about that. <laughs> so underwear, underwear. Last week I had. Let's see now, my lighting's weird again. Um, so last week I had. I had gotten a, like a whole bunch of um, haiku by Skasal, Kobasi, in the mail. The Kobasi is a cotton bamboo silk blend. And I was, I was showing you guys and I was like, this gray one, I didn't order this gray one because when I order yarn, I pretty much go for like some of the more colorful options. And even though my husband would love the gray color, I'm gonna be knitting him boxer shorts that are going to take me like, a couple of weeks to make you can bet that I'm gonna be wanting to do it in some more colorful yarn so I realized on camera that she had mistakenly sent me the wrong one and I went back and I checked my receipt on the invoice and sure enough she had sent me four skeins that I did not order the rest of it was correct but four of those I totally didn't order so I sent her an email and I was really 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 pleased with the response that I got I was like you know it's it's not a big deal I know that mistakes happen and but this here's a picture of the yarn that you sent and here's the invoice this isn't the color I ordered I really do still want the actual color that I picked because you know I had something really specific in mind and anyway so she got back to me, two of, two of her employees got back to me, like the, the one that saw that my email was like, oh my gosh, it looks like we totally goofed up and I'm gonna make sure Maureen sees this. So I had ordered this from somewhere that I never heard of, um, Graywood Designs. I will put the name here because their customer service was amazing. They don't have a whole lot of inventory of anything on their website, but they, they have like, a whole bunch of stuff and I ordered from them so they're based in Pigeon Michigan I guess I don't know where Pigeon Michigan is but it's in Michigan and the reason that I ordered from her is because they had quantities that I needed of 
this yarn and they had it on sale. Normally it is $9 and she, she had it on sale for six. And because I was ordering so many, like that was gonna add up to be like a significant dif difference. So if you guys are interested in ordering this yarn, she has it over there and I'm pretty sure it's still on sale. Um, but I also needed to let her know because like if she had mistakenly sent me the yarn, then her inventory was going to be inaccurate, right? So I needed to let her know. But so she got back to me and she was like, oh my goodness, I am so sorry. Thank you for sending a picture of our mistake. Keep the yarn as our oops gift and we will just right away send you out what you ordered. And so she sent out the color that I actually ordered, which was much more colorful. So it was this um, green and blue. And then also, so I got this in the mail yesterday or the day before, I don't remember. And she sent a nice little note and she was like, also please accept this pattern as our oops gift to you. And so she sent this pattern um, for these pudgy pets and how cute are these? And so this is actually using like, this guy is in that color yarn that I just showed you. And so this is actually using the Haiku Kobasi yarn. And these guys are so cute. So, I mean, I am going to be knitting my husband his boxers with this, but I am pretty sure that I'm going to have yarn left over. So I think a pudgy pet might actually be in my future or in Owen's future because they're so cute. So that was just really sweet. She was so kind to correct her mistake and at no charge to me, I was like, how, how should we resolve this? Like, like, I didn't know if she was gonna need me to send back the yarn that she sent back, that she had sent by mistake and whatever. I just, I left it, I just asked her, like, how do you wanna resolve this? This is, this is what's going on. And it, yeah, it was, it was the best customer service. So you guys should definitely all go check out her website. Her name is Maureen and I'll put it up here on the screen for you guys. And I'll link to it also in the description box below the video so that you guys can go on over there and support her because yeah, she, she let me keep the yarn and she sent me a free pattern and she went above and beyond and that's how customer service should be. So yeah, so that was, that was one acquisition that I got in the mail was to correct a mistake. Um, and then the other thing that I got in the mail was the yarn that I ordered for one of the upcoming test knits that I have for Annie of Boho Chic Fabrico. This is going to be for her playwright sweater, which is a really fun design using similar color work to that of the Journey Tee, but in a totally different um, style. So um, I will show you that in a second. So this is what I got. I ordered it from, I ordered it from Toft, which I had, no, from, sorry, Toft, Talt. <laughs> from Talt in Washington. I had never ordered from there before. And so they had, um, this is the yarn that Annie used in her pattern, but I chose different colors. And so Talt had both the Kelburn Scout, which I have never used before, and the Woolfolk Flet. And so I chose these two colors, and these I think are going to be so pretty together. So I'm really excited. Um, so you can see that these yarns have a totally different texture. So I think that that's gonna be really fun. There's a little bit of color work in this design. So I ordered that and I told you guys also that um, that, that flat yarn I thought was gonna be like really maybe perfect for inside the mittens, the Bernie mittens that I'm going to be making for Bryce. So I picked up this color to go inside the mittens. So Bryce felt this. He's like, that's a really, really interesting texture. And it, it feels like it's going to be really soft. So I'm going to try this for that. Um, and then I was like, I checked. I had never ordered from them before. So I checked to see like what their shipping policies were and then I realized like with the quantity of my order I was six dollars away from free shipping 
So then I just searched for things that could get me to the free shipping point and I found this little tag. So this was like $6. Um, but this is cute. It's got a sheep on it. It's like a leather tag. And so you just, you fold it up onto like the bottom edge of your sweater. Here, I'll like put it on like this, my sleeve here so you guys can see. So you just put this on like the bottom of your sweater and it's just like a cute little extra detail. So I would much rather have a cute little thing like this than just pay for shipping. That's just me. But you guys, all right, that's today's episode. Another long one. I think I just started babbling because I'm just really feeling happy to be sitting outside. And yeah, I just, I don't know. This has been great sitting out here. So I hope that you guys enjoyed being outside, even though there's really nothing to look at out here. I don't have any knitting things other than what I brought out here to show you guys, but it's just glorious out here. I hope that wherever you guys are, that you're experiencing like a little bit of this surge of spring weather too, if you've been living somewhere really cold. I love the winter because of, you know, getting to wear all of my hand knits and all of that stuff. But I think after this year of just being constantly at home, constantly at home, I mean, I am, I know that, I know that most people have been stuck completely at home for like a year now. And it's been really hard. Um, but I also know that like, out of the people that I know personally, everybody else has been able to go and do their job in some, at least in some kind of hybrid fashion. So like everybody else I know, while they have done virtual stuff for a while and a lot of it, Everybody that I know has also been able to resume doing their job in person and being around other people. And I haven't been able to have that at all. My teaching has been completely 100% virtual and I have been staring at a screen in my basement teaching my students for an entire year. And it's really, really been wearing on me. I really, I really miss seeing people. You know, I, I have just, I've, I've felt like other people, even though it hasn't been an, a great situation for anybody, it's been a struggle. Like Owen gets to go to school, so he gets to be around people. My husband's job requires, even though he's like isolated in his job, his job requires him to be there in person. So he's, even just, even just my commute, like I miss my commute. I miss getting in my car and driving places. And like, I feel like myself getting like teared up right now because like, I don't know, like I'm just, I'm frustrated. I'm just, I, I think I've been handling it really well and I'm not an extrovert. I am, I am a person who really likes to be at home doing my own thing. But I also like to be, I like for that to be on my terms, you know? And so I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit envious just of like my own friends and family who, who are having like in-person exchanges and you know, it's, it's why I love taking Owen to theater two days a week is because I get to actually get in the car and drive somewhere. I'm not going anywhere else. I'm, I'm dropping him off at theater, but just, just that little bit has been amazing for me to just give me a reason to get out of the house. Um, so, so it's just wearing on me. So I think just, just being able to come and, and sit outside for, for today's episode. I just, I hope that, I hope that you guys were okay with that. It's just, it was really good for me to just get outdoors this afternoon and just get a little bit of sunshine. And yeah, I mean, 
I'm still isolated by myself talking to a phone but um, yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be months still before I am eligible I think out of all of my friends and family I am like the last person that's going to be eligible for a vaccine so you know I'm thrilled that everybody is getting theirs because that's important for everybody but you know there's there's it's just wearing on me I'm feeling I'm just feeling like really drained from all of it all of a sudden this week and I don't know if that's just because it's like the one year anniversary of this all like really hitting home and lockdown starting um, but yeah that's just that's just kind of how I'm feeling so I don't know if I should edit this out of the podcast or just like leave it in but um, yeah I just wanted to say thank you for being out doors with me today so um yeah so that is it um i hope that you guys enjoyed this week's episode and i will be back with more next week okay thank you guys so much for watching and sticking with me bye